everyone, welcome to my channel Living Around. My name is Irene and today I am in a private garden that is located in Kota Kinabalu in Sabah. This is in North Borneo and this is a very special garden because it is the garden of a landscaper. I have never ever visited a garden that is like of the landscaper and I am really really excited to get started. Keith! Irene, hello! <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Irene. Nice to Finally. meet you at last. So overwhelmed with this papyrus, you call Papyrus it? Avenue. Wow, okay, we will get to that later. First, Keith, a little bit because this is kind of actually the first time we have met. Sure. Thank you very much for letting me tour your garden. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you for visiting me. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about um, what you do? I, I know you are a landscaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a landscape architect by profession and yeah, I actually am a freelancer now. So okay. I'm just, I just moved in here last year and been doing up the garden ever since. Oh, last year? Yeah. Oh my God, this looks like a really, really established garden. Oh, thank you so much. I think we have to work. get started because there's quite <laughs> a bit. So, Keith, take me through your, your front yard. So this front area is just a mixture of a few banana plants, some heliconias and okay. a lot of bromeliads as you can see okay. because they can actually withstand the heat. Mm. One of the very few, you know, plants, plants that can actually withstand the heat and these yeah. all grew, grew naturally. Are these like, can I say, are like kind of the roadside Wild ferns? ferns. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, see them lots in Malaysia and um, they seem to do well on your own outside, True. right? And this is... You know, it can stand the full sun. Ah. It's not always watered and they don't actually burn, which I'm quite surprised about. Okay. So ferns that grow naturally, you know, don't disturb them because they will just do their thing. Yeah. yeah. Good ground cover too. Absolutely. The colocas, this is the white lava? This is the white lava, but I just reported it recently, so mm -hmm. it's taking its time to adjust to ah. uh, yeah, the variegation. I noticed you have your white lava in, a, in water, grown in a pot that's, of water. That's true, yes. I'm actually growing them in, I make mixes for each type of plant. Okay. So for the colocasias, mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit rocky and I also grow them in full water ah. because I think that's the best way they grow. Okay. Yeah, I think that works really well for them so far. How about the mosquitoes? Are you not worried? Not at all because every day I top up the water. Oh, okay. They drain it like almost like every day. Mm. So I, when I top it up, I always check anyway. There's okay. nothing there. Okay. Yeah. I do know they like a lot of water, but I didn't know you can grow them actually in water. Yeah. And then my eyes are drawn like to things that are like hanging off, <laughs> making your garden look really whimsical. Thank you. I've always loved the art of hanging anything in kokodoma balls or. But this, this orchid seems to have nothing at all, and it, it can. Yeah, it's been like this for a year. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Vanda over Poor here. They've okay. actually. They have a lot of aerial roots, yeah. so they don't really need anything as such. And this has ah. been putting out new growth. Okay. This bit over here has been putting out tons of new growth okay. from last year. So j that's it. Literally, I just spray it with water every few days. Wow. Not even every day now. Wow. Yeah. Guys, so well. you can just hang your orchids on um, nothing. <laughs> on like a recycled okay. chopstick, you know, when they give you the yeah. takeaways. Okay. So I painted a chopstick and after that I just tied it Twirl. to it. Twirl. Yeah, to give it a bit of support. Ah, oh, this is a nice whimsical <laughs> decor and it can bounce too. It can bounce, yeah. <laughs> it's actually fishing wire, so it's a very good, um, how do you say, oh. a good tip. Tip, you know, yeah, that yeah. You can just put two screws on each end yes. and you can actually pull a fishing wire and hang multiple plants along that. Oh. And it's quite... You know, sturdy. Yeah. I'm gonna do something like that for my garden. Awesome. And maybe like add fake butterflies and stuff. If, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> See some spectacular giant bird nest. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite plants since I was a kid. Oh. My parents used to grow these in the garden. Okay. Um, they're actually just up the road over there. So mm -hmm. when I moved here, I took a few from the garden, mm -hmm. but also some baby ones, but they've really kind of done their thing, you know, in the past year. Yeah. And I always throw my 
my <laughs> garden rubbish. waste. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sure you do it as well at your Yeah, yeah. Place. It's become like a rubbish collector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one is creeping up the wall by itself. Yeah, I, it wasn't oh. intended to. Uh -huh. Obviously, I just shoved it here and it started doing its thing. This is the Lacerum, Philodendron Lacerum. Okay. So it kind of just started creeping That's up. That's good. That's like it's doing it by itself. Did you have to water the <coughs> no. wall very often? No. Just okay. right at the bottom. Oh, I do like this. This is just what my parents used to do at home because we had a lot of trees in the mm -hmm. garden. So we used to just tie a lot of things onto there. But okay. moving in here, yeah. the whole garden was pretty bare. Mm -hmm. And I just needed things to support my plants. Okay. And of course, like bromeliads and all, they don't really need any, any media. soil. So, you know. Yeah. It literally just comes right off. Oh, you really have them in the th nothing. Yeah, actually. literally. This is uh, how it's been growing for the past year, and it's actually put out a baby on oh, the side. Oh, wow. Yeah. I always thought maybe they needed some. Some kind of. Something. I think it would grow, grow more mm -hmm. in soil, grow faster. Not soil, soil though. They tell me um, it really likes chunky stuff. Maybe coconut, like um, chip, yeah, husk, chips, coconut chips, chips yeah. and coconut husk. Yes. Actually, all of those over there are yeah. all in husk. Husk, okay. Yeah, but a fiber. Okay. Coconut fiber. But so be careful though, because these husks, if they're subject to uh, water every day, mm. they can rot True. quite fast. True. So do check them in 6 to 12 months. Okay. Yeah, I learned yeah. that. And I also learned from a, a big bromeliad grower, uh, he uses charcoal. Yeah. That works too. Because it's antibacterial as well, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty good. And it doesn't degrade. Yes, it doesn't yeah. degrade. So tip for you guys who wants to uh, take care of your bromeliad. <laughs> okay, I, I, I do want to move along because there's sure. so many things to see. <laughs> Oh, and then this is some cluster of pitcher plants. Yeah, Nepenthes. Yeah, some pitcher plants. I just tied it onto this. This is a tree fern bark. Uh huh. So they have a lot of these in, in Sabah. Yeah. And they literally sell these at the market for like oh. maybe five ringgit. Oh, wow. Which is one something USD. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And literally they just do their thing, you know? <laughs> they I, find their way. I have never seen pitcher plant uh, mounted on a fern bark or right. like that. So that's something It new. is something different, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do use what you have. Yes. Like this piece of wood over here. Oh, was, it's like... This was actually just found next to my mom's house. So, uh -huh. you know, we brought it over. I tied it up here and wow. just mounted plants onto it. Just using string and after a while they will naturally hold on to it. This is a great idea because I have uh, live in the neighborhood where there are people cutting down the trees or chopping yeah. off their branches. So I have been collecting these That's things. Awesome. But I haven't uh, used them entirely. Did you have to treat these things before? No, I usually <laughs> I usually am so lazy because yeah. there's so many things to do. So I'm yeah. like, it's going up, I'm putting things on. If it rots, it rots. Okay. Then just replace it with another piece of wood because I believe a garden is ever changing. Yeah. That's what I've always believed. You know, okay. this garden has actually transformed in the past year, maybe mm -hmm. six, seven times. I can't even Already. keep up. The avenue has moved, you know, multiple times. So yeah. it just. You, you know it in your garden yeah. is an ever an ever going yes, yeah, process. Yes, it is so. But I really like how this. Thank looks. you. Thank you. <gasps> and then we have this. Alocasia macrizos variegata. Yeah. And it actually put out two new leaves in the expanse of less than a month, just for your visit. And it's putting out a new one now as well. Oh my god! <laughs> it doesn't usually do that that fast though. It just oh, knew you were coming. So it, it wants like... to impress me. Exactly. <laughs> So this one, you say you had it for how long? Um, mid last year or towards, yeah, mid last year or towards the end of last year. So okay. it hasn't been a year yet. And what was the size when you first got it? Oh my god! Something, oh, it's not here now, it's over there. But literally, you know, oh, one, wow. two leaves. And that time it was really pricey, you know, for yes, that size. Yes. I got it for a hundred ringgit. Okay. Just like maybe 20 something USD, I yeah. think, yeah. And now it look at that size. Yeah, but this has been confined a lot. So it could in a year's time it could definitely have, you know, reached this size. Wow. But because I confine it to a to pot. Pots, so yeah. of course you always have to make sure the nutrients mm. is like it's ample mm -hmm. in the pot. Yeah. And that's why it'll keep on producing new leaves with the variegation. Mm -hmm. And it good gets amount of good light. amount of light. Absolutely. Yeah. If not, it will not produce that much. Yes. And you don't have problems of it burning, I see. Like. I'm surprised yeah. that it didn't burn. <laughs> because I think it gets like 50 50. Yes. And the sun changes throughout the year. I think mm -hmm. in every garden, it kind of does that. Yeah. You know? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
This fern is very unusual, like it's hard. This is actually a, <laughs> one of a very unique fern, but it's a giant tree fern. And oh. it's not easy to find, but you know, yeah. this is very different from the common ferns that we have, which is very soft. Do you have the name for this? I do, it's Scythea contaminants. Scythea contaminants. Oh, impressed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, Irene, I yeah. have something to show you. Okay, what? Well. Don't laugh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you my secret garden. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Let's yes. go, let's go. <laughs> Show go me. Okay. You lead the way. You enter here and this is it. So the willow trees have naturally done their thing where they've just grown and kind of had this, obviously it's a weeping willow, so it has this whimsical yeah, feeling again. Yes. So you don't really need to tie anything to this tree because it kind of just has this beautiful yeah. sweeping effect. It's like very poet poetic. Poetic, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh my god. Okay, it's a bit of a journey. Okay. I don't have yes. my machete with me, but <laughs> we'll manage. Wow, these are like curtains. Weeping willows are so romantic. They are. Oh, look at the size of these. Black magic. Colocasia black, black magic. Oh my god. I mean, I can't believe this. You've done this in just like a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And it does feel like a secret garden. Yeah, you wouldn't know all the caladiums are hiding here. Yeah. So these have been back to the front, to the back, to the front about six times. Oh, poor and caladiums. Yeah, because when you move into a new place, you don't know where they like where it. they would like the you know which spot is the best. Oh. But because things keep growing, yeah. Then finally, I have the shade, and these calathea luteas <gasps> are the oh, these are just amazing. It's one of my favorite. They're and I got so them like just a, as a baby. It was literally like this. Oh. And it's like... <laughs> and they are um, so huge. They it gives are. that tropical feeling, right? One of my favorite plants. And it has yeah. a silver kind of powdery back. Yes. So when you see them from afar, mm -hmm. they kind of have this glisten in the sun oh, effect. Oh, yeah. nice. So it kind of adds to that whimsical theme, you know, going throughout yes. the garden. And this is uh, like a, a really... It feels like a secret enclosure, guys. Sure. And and down here, I don't know if you can see it, but there are a lot of caladiums. Yeah, so we have multiple species here. Some are very common, but mm -hmm. just because I wanted, you know, I don't want to <laughs> throw anything out. Yeah. So we have the Florida clown here, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The caladium butterfly. Ah. I think that is Miss Muffet, if I'm not mistaken. Miss Muffet, okay. This is Caladi dugging. Or oh, meat colad uh, cal like a caladium, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have the Thai beauty over there. Yes. Angel wings. Oh, these are angel wings. Yeah, these are oh, angel wings. Okay. This is sex. No, this is sexy pink, and this is pink beauty. I think, oh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. you know how they have so many names nowadays. <laughs> yeah. It, it, this one is very yeah, unusual. I, is this the I same just, plant? It is, but I just noticed it the other day. Yeah. Because when they were really small, you know, you didn't really look twice. Yeah. But now that they've grown, it's really beautiful. I yeah. forgot the name of this one. Okay. This is heart and soul. Before it was quite rare. I'm not about. I'm not sure about now. Mm. You're getting me excited about caladiums again. again. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I aim to inspire, so I'm happy if you you know got a little I'm bit of inspiration. Get... Yes. <laughs> And now coming out of coming the out secret of the garden. Secret. Now my alocasia is actually doing really well under this dappled light here. Oh. So this is the Lotha Bachiana. Yeah. The stingray. Oh yes. The... And then... Oh, now I forgot this one. Mm. Starts with a C. <laughs> Chia Penzi? No, oh. that's another the one. The Syngonium, I think. I think I have the yes. names like written down usually, but... Mm. So I'm ready to take you through our papyrus. My papyrus. <laughs> <Avenue. laughs> our yes, yes. My papyrus avenue. I, no, I don't no, like it's mine. The papyrus <laughs> avenue. I love it. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad. Wait, before we walk through it, I I just want to see how it's done. Is it like in a lot of water? Because I thought they live in water. They usually do live in water, and they'll do best in water. If mm -hmm. you don't give them enough water they will dry out and start to just break oh, one by one. Okay. So obviously 
because it's not in the wild, what I have to do is I have to tape the pots shut at the bottom. Okay. And it doesn't always work, but most of the time it does. Mm -hmm. I fill it up with a mixture of things and then I just grow it. So they kind of grow by, by rhizome? Mm, they do. Okay. And they keep spreading and when they reach the point here, they will yep. just keep pushing themselves upwards. Ah, like this one needs a new pot to Absolutely. for you to cut it. I only reported them about three, four months ago oh. and I did all of them which took me about a couple of days. It's like a full-time job. It is a, just the Papyrus Avenue alone is a full-time job. So, yeah, I want to show uh, like here. Mm -hmm. You can really see that like it's in water. Yep. And then uh, no mosquitoes. Earth, yeah. Because they drink so much water every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. When I first uh, moved in, yeah, and I did the avenue, I actually had to top up the water three times a day. So. I don't worry about it's good love that you have home office. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> okay, now for the grand walk up into the Papyrus Avenue. Oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, it really feels some kind of magical. Yeah, I love enclosures and it yes. kind of just leads you along the space. Yes. And one thing I wanted to point out here is the Gamatophyllum orchid. It has this beautiful root structure. It is so odd. It looks like a little furry animal. <laughs> it does. So it's actually growing on a coconut shell. Ah. And what it would do if it's on a tree bark, yep. so it'll just cling there and all the roots will naturally find themselves. Oh, okay. Oh, so cute. <laughs> and same thing, I just like to use a lot of the furry tree, bark. tree fern barks. Yep. Yep. Okay, this is very creative. Just a moment, Irene. I need to give you your welcome drink. There we go. Wow. Orange juice with some strawberries. Oh my god, what hospitality. Look at Please that. Enjoy. Orange juice with <laughs> strawberries. I like this house and garden tour. I'm glad. Thank wow. you. <laughs> I was just saying, I have a lot of these that fell from my palm. Is this part of a palm yes, leaf? Yes, this is a palm leaf sheath. Oh. And this is connected to the palm leaves. So, mm -hmm. what my dad does is that ever since I said I wanted these, he has cut off the leaf for me. Yeah. And I converted them into kind of like hanging planters. So, you can do a lot of these things. Some people, they would, you know, paint, paint it. Oh. You know, make a do polka dot patterns yeah. on it and stuff. But for me, I like it quite natural. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, this gives me an idea because awesome. I have a lot of these. And instead of it going into the bags for the you know, mm -hmm. the trucks to take them away, why yeah. not keep yes. reusing them? So. And that, that's like a half coconut shell. Yes, I use a lot of these coconut shells. Initially, uh, I used these because of what I had. Yeah. Um, and the orchids obviously love them. Oh. So you can actually just throw charcoal in here or what did I put in? Coconut pieces? Yeah, cocoa chips. Cocoa chunks. And, and then hello. Yeah, and instead of throwing <laughs> not just the shell but the actual coconut. Coconut. Um, coconut, yeah. yeah. So just to planting an orchid on here and as you can see all the aerial roots have clung right on. Yeah, it looks like it's chilling on yeah, like it's a... Yeah, it's just chilly, yeah. <laughs> sitting on a just chair. Just like us chilling. right now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh wow, and oh goodness, this is hanging. This is something different because usually we always see them on the trees or on the yeah. ground. But I wanted to do something different because it just took up too much space. Mm -hmm. And initially it was just about this size or okay. smaller. Yeah. So since I hung it here, it gets just enough light mm -hmm. and you know, enough air around the roots. Yeah. And now the new leaves are just getting bigger and bigger. Wow. <laughs> I'm not too sure what to do with it when it gets too big, but so far, it's really stretching up. Okay. Yeah. I have one that's sitting on the ground and mm. it's taking a lot of space. It does. So now maybe I could copy your idea <laughs> and uh, hang it. Trademark, trademark. <laughs> trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saw your vertical wall. Thank you, Irene. So lush. <laughs> It's incredible. Well, as you know, with a vertical wall, just like yours, it is not easy to look after. Yeah. when things don't get enough light, you know, underneath or things to get too much water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes ferns tend to dry out on the wall because they are actually hidden, you know, way under here. Oh, so yeah. you don't want to water this too much, but this tends to dry out. So what I've done now with the ferns is that I've actually added sphagnum moss. Oh. So it traps in the moisture a lot yeah. longer than uh, the other plants. Okay, 
Because yeah, you have to consider their different needs. Absolutely. Uh, watering, light. Yeah, yeah. And but right now, I actually have everything in their individual mixes. Ah. And that's what's difficult sometimes because some might dry out quicker than than the others. Okay. But they tend to, you know, do well now, especially this one, the Philotanium lindenii. Used to be known as the Caladium. I th it yeah. thought it was a Caladium. It yeah. is, it's a synonym, so okay. you can. It's interchangeable. All right. And this is a Magnificum, Anthurium Magnificum. Yeah. It got it from a baby, so now it's taking shape. Oh. Some Boston ferns. Oh wait, I want to get back Go to ahead, um, sure. the vertical wall. If you were to advise someone on their vertical wall and mm -hmm. and what to put together, so what would the things you ask it to consider? First things first. I think you need to have an idea in mind what you like. Mm -hmm. Do you like things which are very structured? Mm -hmm. So you need to, you know, plan on your shapes. For me, I just like it quite natural. Mm -hmm. So I do have an idea in mind, like a focal point, which is what we all learn in any kind of like design. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Anything to do with design, you kind of always have a focal point. Mm -hmm. So I started off, I think, as yeah. you can see, with a five by low here and mm -hmm. over there with the alocasia so your eyes are kind of drawn towards these plants first okay and actually what i did with the wall is just whatever i had at the moment i just used because most of the things i bought were you know from babies we're tiny so okay. as they grow i keep changing them around this wall has been changed three to four times already oh, okay in just less than a year <laughs> so it's it's a lot of work but yeah. you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't so and my advice to people is Choose your plants wisely. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend choosing the plants which are really hardy for any living walls. Okay. I don't put caladiums here before and all, but if they don't get enough light, then the yeah, color yeah. tends to go. And you put bromeliads, I Actually, think, on Actually, so what, well. what didn't work for my mm -hmm. vertical wall was, I, I put the bromeliad as my focal point because yes. I thought it's bright red, but my wall is pretty shady. So the mm. red slowly yeah. turned to green because <laughs> bromeliads turn to green when you don't they give do. them enough uh, light. And then, so yeah, my bromelids didn't do well. I have to take them out. Oh, what a shame. I would suggest things like anthuriums okay, or yeah. philodendrons, anything like your gloriosum. I think yeah. that would be a beautiful addition to the wall. If you have gloriosums, I believe. I do have gloriosum, yeah. yeah. Okay. So my anthuriums do not bad too on the sure. wall. I even put calathea on the wall because uh, yeah. they are yeah, pretty shade loving. Absolutely. So yeah. that works. And they don't too. lose their variegation with low light. Yeah. That's what I love so about So, you know, calatheas <laughs> are uh, highly patterned leaves, right? And mm -hmm. we've got some I can lying show around. You some on the other wall later. Yeah, and, and they, they will never lose their variegation. So, very good plants mm -hmm. there. And fairly affordable too. <gasps> oh, this is a different bucket. It yeah? is. I'm not sure the exact species because most people said it's Defenbachia army because of the Ar yeah. you know the camouflage Ascar. yeah Ascar exactly I, I I thought maybe it could, could be called Maya could I was be. googling it okay. up couldn't seem to find this one but yeah. you you might be right Homalumina yeah rubescence Homalumina yes. rubescence I'm trying to figure out uh, what makes your garden feel so so special I think it's Is because it the hanging got elements things hanging yeah most probably because we tend to think about what's below most of the time mm -hmm. and you know for them to grow upwards yeah. but when you put in elements that hang yeah you can really transform a space yes i believe so it kind of really envelopes it nicely um oh begonias yeah one of my favorite it's begonias. huge this is uh this is uh it's like a real funny name it's a U U something number. Like no, that's a U501 over here. And that's a U400. Oh. And this is a Malaysian begonia apparently. Found originally in Penang Botanical ah. Gardens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> this I've never seen such a huge pot of begonia. <laughs> this is amazing. I absolutely love this one. It just has such a beautiful texture as well. It's quite yeah. furry. And easy going too. Very right? easy going. This is one of the easiest ones. Okay, great. So usually when I lose a few leaves from this begonia, I kind of just throw them onto the bricks over here and oh. they just take shape. Wow. So <laughs> I mean, you can propagate it like I've done before in those containers you know I used yeah. to get lots of takeaways last yes. year and I think you've done some as well yeah so you kind of tear them or mm -hmm. you know cut them and put them there close them for a few months mm -hmm. and I got a few babies so I've had them you know grown around the house but wow. it's so much easier just taking it and, and throwing then, it 
it happens too if they yeah. just chuck it on in the a ground. cool spot very bright light yeah on bricks on but, bricks yeah on bricks but in between there is a little bit of soil so okay. they kind of just find their their yeah. way you know okay like all these begonias i threw them here and they're all just kind of growing <laughs> of course i will need to take them out at some point but they found their way through and there's soil underneath the bricks, so that okay, really works. Okay, I have never seen begonia grow on bricks. This is very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's because you cannot overwater it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I have seen people using uh, broken bricks or, or clay okay. as a potting media. Yeah, I've tried before as well, and it works. Yeah. But there needs to be enough moisture from like sphagnum moss or something. Okay. But it's a, it's a fine line, it's a fine balance. Yeah. But over here, it's like, you know, natural. Oh. So it's like, there you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Oh, hello. And this is the blue fern. Blue fern? Yeah, spike moss blue fern. Ah, uh, it's a. S it's actually a wax. Yes, Serraginella. Wow, it's huge. So, it, when the light hits it, I think you know as yeah, well that blue. it has this waxy coating on there, which yeah. will appear blue. Not sure if you can catch it in the video, okay, but yeah. I think oh, from different nice. angles you might be able to get it. Yeah. So it's really lush, it's really liking the oh. filtered light. Okay. And down here we have the Paris over day. Okay. This is yep, supposedly good. pink princess, not very princess like. Not very not giving... pinky anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not giving me, but I think I'm gonna start trying to cut, you know, cut them up down. and see if I can bring up the pink again and okay. Gloriosum hiding there. Mm. Gigantium, Philodendron Gigantium. And this is just a propagation zone, so lots going on, not mm -hmm. really like a whole theme, but yeah. just from here to the back is mainly just lots of propagation. Okay. And I just want to clear all of it out yeah. and then just start fresh again, you know what I mean? Actually, uh, your propagation area looks very neat and clean, Thank I you. have to say. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's important if we are like real gardeners, you do need an area that's it's like it's not perfect because you have True. all these propagating or, or sick plants yeah. going on even the best gardener has rotting plants you know and yeah. you need to bring them somewhere so yes. <laughs> so if you are designing a garden do make space for an area that's kind of isolated from the rest of the main garden where you could hide all your plants that's in intensive care or, or under propagation because <laughs> you're not going to be looking at their best yeah i agree <laughs> Yep, this is another black magic here. I didn't grow it. It kind of found its way here and I've just left it to do its thing. What? But because, <laughs> well, because it's not getting too much light, that's why it doesn't turn as black as the rest. It's kind of like a deep green. So it needs more light to be black? Absolutely. Full sun. Oh. Full sun. Uh, Colocasia black magic, or most Colocasias, they need full sun. But like the mojitos, they uh -huh. kind of need like 50-50. Yeah. And then they will show their variegation a bit more. I I always had this theory that the plant uh, turns green when it's not getting enough light. True. Okay, yes, this is this what's happening here. This is so what's yes. happening here. Yes, okay, <laughs> so my brain is working. Okay. It is working. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the juice. <laughs> okay, so now we've come to the backyard. Yeah, so this is my competition plant. Yeah, yo, it <laughs> looks familiar. It looks familiar. So Wonder yesterday we had a aroid uh, competition in Sabah and this plant was one of the key winners. Well, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't the champion. <laughs> it's fine. One of the key winning plants. So this is um, an Alocasia macarizos. They cross breaded with the uh, porte. Porte, yeah. okay, okay. So it's a really interesting one because you have this really huge leaves. Yeah. But if you grow it in the ground, then this will kind of double in size. Oh, yes. So it really would reach, you know, maybe a couple of mm. meters. I saw one in Sarawak. It was a hybrid oh, wow. porte with something else and then they call it the portodora. Wow, I haven't seen it yet. But it looks like this. Okay, I can't tell. Maybe they go by different names. You never yeah. know, yeah? Yes. And over here on the left hand side, we have some ornamental bananas. They have the pink flowers, which are obviously not edible. Oh. So, but they grow so fast, so I have to split them into all different pots. Too many babies. Too many babies, you know. That's the thing about having too many plants. They keep reproducing and it's like, oh. And then this is uh, your mummy plant? This is the heliconia. Oh, this, I can't tell <laughs> a banana versus okay. the heliconia. Because it's stretching for the light, but I really love the fern wall behind it. 
Actually, that is my yeah, favorite. did it happen naturally. by itself? Yeah. Oh, that's the best. When I first moved in, it was actually growing really well, and yeah. then a grass cutter came. And uh, it's like thought, weed, weed. Yeah, he thought it was a, there were loads of weeds, so he, oh. he actually used the grass cutter on the wall, and I was so upset. Oh my god. <laughs> and now, a year later, I'm so happy that it's back You're to You're coming back. Yeah, I might prune this a little bit more so you can kind of see, see, you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Yes. But this is, uh, and these are the ones that would actually produce edible bananas. Okay. Kisang brangan. Okay. Yeah. I'm a little upset because my husband is pantang about oh, bananas. I think I saw, yeah, one of yeah, the people mentioned that. Yeah, I always complain <laughs> uh, whenever I see a banana tree. Oh, man. And in fact, somebody gave me uh, as a gift, uh, like the a variegated, the Musa Florida. Oh, beauty. wow. And, uh, but I killed it. No. It, it was a period of time where it rained a lot. Yeah. And then, and then the leaves started turning brown oh, and then I thought, oh, maybe it's getting burnt by the sun. By the time I, I took it out, the root was gone. So this is not the papyrus. This is the same genus, so uh -huh. it's cypress. And this is the umbrella, umbrella plant. Uh -huh. It doesn't need to be in water there. It can be. So this oh. one is one of the most hardy plants. Okay. You can plant it in really rock hard soil, you can plant it in really marshy soil. Okay. And in water, in mm -hmm. anything really. Okay, very versatile. Very versatile. Oh, look at this. A lot more. You have a lot of black coral. <laughs> black magic. Mm -hmm. So magic. the thing about black magic is that they spread like wildfire. Oh. And they grow everywhere. So it's kind of a good thing, but at the same time, it's Sticking not such over. a good thing. It's like kind of normal soil. Are they fussy about the soil? No, this is it loves really marshy soil, so it ah. also grows in water. I've grown some okay. in water before, and they reach like really big. Like this is almost full size. Mm -hmm. it can get just a little bigger than this, but this is an old leaf, so mm -hmm. it starts to fade. Yeah. Okay. And some illustrious uh, hiding among here. And then and more the of this. They're amazing backdrop plants, yeah. or kind of create like a hedge, yes. a really loose hedge. So yeah. like over there, I didn't really want to have mm. too much exposure to the yes. road. Okay. So planting these last year was the best idea, I think. So for people who are looking for uh, easy plants and to grow quickly, yeah. and especially if you want to shield away from your neighbors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the road, this is a really good plant to do. And it's a very tropical yeah. plant. You know, it gives you that tropical feel. Like yes. it's almost like a banana and a heliconia yeah. married together. <laughs> yes. The only thing is maybe it's, it's just leafy. It doesn't have like nice flowers to show. Like ginger kind of like, like flowers, yeah. but yeah. But it does its job as a very nice foliage. So I have some colocasias over here. This one has red stems, so interesting. This is really beautiful. It was given to me by a friend mm. and it's called Colocasia Hawaiian Punch. Ah. And right next to it is the Colocasia Teacup. Tea cup. Yeah, yep. teacup. Got it right? Uh, I remember they love water. Yeah, right? so they're all growing in water as well and they drink it really like every day, so I just top it up. Yeah. Oh, what are these interesting This is the Aquisitum Hymel. Ah. This is the... It's like a weed. But it's also an ornamental weed Plot. that people use in like very um, in landscapes okay. with water. Okay. So they grow it in like one stretch and they kind of trim it as a hedge. Ah. This is the mojito. Yeah. This All my is... babies kind of just took off and became their own mother plants now. Oh. These mojitos here. Wow. Because they are not the easiest ones to no. grow. But I just... also bought one Sorry, about maybe you... three years ago and. It... It's no more. Oh no, I almost killed mine, but I've managed to save it. Then all of a sudden babies were coming out left, right and center. But I grew oh. them in water as well, Gosh. in a very rocky mix. So yeah. I think growing them in soil has a higher chance of them rotting. rotting. Whereas okay. when it's in water, it kind of de develops water roots as yeah. well, which would be more... Well, I'm not sure. You never know what's in the soil. Mm. <laughs> so hit and miss really. Yeah. And then uh, variegated. Yeah. Um, hibiscus ciliaceus. Variegata. Ah. It's one of my favorite hibiscus because when they come up with the new growth, they'll have the pink leaves and like the white leaves, half moons. Look at this. Full moons. <laughs> Full moons. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you already have this whipping willow tree? No, when you there was nothing when I moved in. So literally, I grew it from the size of this. It was given to me by a friend, a cutting in water, and since it, like... 
it's so fast. Very fast. The thing about the willows is that it's extremely fast, but the roots can get quite invasive. That's what they told me. I learned from also uh, Dr. Francis Ong that mm -hmm. the roots are they they are very hungry for water. They are. So the surrounding plants may be zapped of uh, water. Water. So far, um, because I've added enough nutrients here, okay. and I do water most of the plants, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, I used to water them daily, so I think uh, it kind of like benefited from it. Yeah. But their roots can travel up to quite a distance. Okay. So I think it can find water anywhere throughout the garden. Mm. Mm. All right. I also have killed a willow tree. No, yeah. a willow tree. I know. Because <laughs> I know. Really. It was my very first tree that I okay. bought. Okay, okay, that's fine. And then I just like how it looked. I didn't know what it needed, so... Um, cool sun, water. Yeah, yeah, they gave it an area that didn't really quite have sun. Oh, that's a shame though. Yes, so yeah. uh, tip, know what the plant needs before you buy them. <laughs> It's all a trial and error kind of yeah. thing, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's good to do a little bit of research before and you And then do. find out if your environment can cater for the plant. If not, then go just buy buy your money. <laughs> mm. yeah, Keith, really nice. what's that? Is you that shall like not a... enter. Why? I'm running away. So, oh, so of course I want to enter life. <laughs> go ahead. It's my tool and gardening shed. <gasps> we built this when I moved in because I knew I would need to store oh all my, my things. Oh my god. This is so neat. Oh, thank you. You put <laughs> To me, it looks a little bit messy, but I have all my mixes in the tubs down there. Uh -huh. So it's very easy for me because I also sell my mixes. Ah. So like allocation mixes, uh, philodendron mixes. I've got the light here. It's you super neat Thank and you. <laughs> super tidy and everything is so organized. Oh. You even have a stools. inventory of stools. So if stools? people wanted to do gardening with me, I can just grab a few stools and they can sit around. People want to do gardening yeah, Actually, with you. my mom and dad, some of my friends, when they come and have a glass of wine, we actually do gardening with wine and just sitting on those stools. I you think do gardening with wine? Why not? It's why so not? Why, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Irene, so I have some refreshments prepared for you over here. Oh my god! Hope you enjoy this later, but before that, Mm -hmm. I do want to show you the surprise. Do yeah. you turn around? Oh. Oh my god! <laughs> you still have more garden? It's this is gorgeous. The indoor garden over here. Wow. And this is all repurposed wood because my friend was getting rid of all the wood from his home. Okay. So that's why you have all the wood outside and here. Oh. And I just put them together myself. I'm surprised like these ferns are also doing well. Yeah. Did you have like, I don't know, to, to mist it, make it more humid? No, nothing. Just literally, I water it once a week now. What? There's a hose in the toilet which I drink out and I just water it once a week. I, like, I want to check your flooring. How does it work? Oh, there's actually a drainage around Drain. okay. around that. Okay. Naturally, it's meant to allow, you know, you to wash yeah. down the area and stuff. Um, Wait, so is there a roof over it or like no, can rain? It can of? rain. As well. it, it can, it can, it can get wet. So can it get I've wet? only installed the installed the black netting, so oh, rain can so come in and everything. Ah, yeah. okay, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I want it to be more natural, and I want to hear the sound of the rain and everything come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I this is my bedroom and that's my work room, so I can actually view this garden 24 7 really. it's like when you're eating or you're sleeping yeah, eating, and when you're working it. absolutely okay a very strategically placed garden there we go this is great and a spot of tea wow any <laughs> milk for you you set the standard very high now for future <laughs> garden tours i was gonna add some milk mm. any sugar no sugar and there we go, Irene. Please oh enjoy. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Um, so, uh, the tour has ended, as you can guess. And <laughs> talking with my mouthful, you go say something. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and for being part of my garden here in Malaysia, Borneo. Yeah. And thank you, Irene, for coming all the way from Kuala Lumpur to and, join me here. And Keith has a YouTube channel, in fact. I do. It's actually called Rooted Down. Yeah. Do I need to spell it out? Because no, it's a I'll, bit I'll of put the label here down below so you can awesome. also check out his channel and what he's doing. He seems to be transforming his garden every other day. So much work to do. Yeah, so much. But yep, yeah, it's what we love to do. So I think it's, it's not really a job. 
because it's just what you love to do. Absolutely. So if you have enjoyed this video, do click uh, like, subscribe, and also share it with others, and check out Keith's channel. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye.